All right, so we're going to solve equations by factoring instead of graphing. So it's a different method for doing the same type of thing. It's a lot like chapter three where we learn several ways of accomplishing a goal because sometimes one's easier than the other. Sometimes one's, you know, better than the other. But solve by factoring. We're going to first explore why it works a little bit, and then I'm going to do some examples. But we have two binomials here. And if you FOIL these out, you get this, which is a standard general form for quadratic. So 1x squared plus 4x minus 5. So the x coordinate of the vertex is at negative 4 over 2. All right, holy smokes, that's bad. Over 2, that's not much better. That's negative 2. So I put a negative 2 in here. I'm actually going to go a little farther than what we usually do, okay, and you're going to have to play along, you know, if you don't see what I'm doing, I actually try to do it yourself as I do it, <clears throat> okay, I'll show a, a bit a bit of work on the first one, so it's negative 2 squared is positive 4, and then plus 4 times negative 2, so that's minus 8, and then minus 5, okay, and so that's way over at negative 9. Okay, so that's a little weird perhaps. So right here. Okay. Okay, so we do negative, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, and I'll scroll down a bit here. Uh, and then negative 1, 0, 1. So I'm going to do the bottom three, and then use symmetry to get the top three. All right, so I'm doing a lot more than I usually do. But I'm going to do the, you know, I'm going to take advantage of the symmetric nature of parabolas and only do one half. Okay, so I'll do the three on the right, you know, and then that'll be that. <clears throat> so one minus four minus five equals, uh, can't think, eight, negative eight. Okay, so this guy better be negative eight as well. The mirror image should be there. So we have negative 8, negative 8. Uh, the y-intercept is negative 5. You know that because of this right here. So I, right off the bat, I can get that. Okay. When I, If I were to plug in 0 up here, I'd get negative 5. So negative 5. And then the mirror image point over here-ish. Okay. And then last but not least, plug in 1. 1. And here we go, we get zero. And so this guy is zero. Okay. And then so I I'll sketch it here. I'll cheat a little bit, I'm gonna pause and draw it, try to draw it well. Alright, so there you go. That's the best I could do. Uh, don't judge me. Alright, so what are the solutions? If we were to solve x squared plus four x minus five equals zero, which is the type of thing we do we did in the, the previous section. So let's pretend it's this. So x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. What would the solutions be? Well, the solutions would be... Alright, so our two solutions are here and here. Now what are those? That's x equals 1. Maybe if I can get a marker up here. x equals 1 and x equals negative 5. So 1 and negative 5. Wait a second, look up here. There's a x minus 1 and an x minus negative 5, right? This would be, it's x plus 5, but it's the same as x minus negative 5. Well, guess what? There you go. That's how you solve by factoring. So the solutions are 1 and negative 5. If you were to see this problem, you would factor it, and then what's nice about factoring it is basically you can see the answers, okay? Just like factoring by graphing, you graph, or excuse me, solving by graphing, the x coordinates of the x-intercepts, so the x-intercepts tell you what the answers are. One works and negative five works. You'll see it in the graph. Well, if you factor, if you solve something by factoring, what you do is you factor it, duh. And then when you do so, you can basically see the answers. X minus one tells us one is an answer. Is one is one of the roots or zeros or the solutions, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. And then X minus negative five tells us negative five is a solution. So that's exactly how you solve by factoring. So let's do like four examples here. 
So right here, we get, and this is the same one, so perhaps dumb to do, but I want to show you how it works. So you do x, x. Now, how do you solve, how do you factor this? Well, we know the answer, but I'm going to walk through how to think about it. So what you do is you look for numbers that multiply to make negative 5 and add to make positive 4. Okay, so you just brainstorm. Sometimes I call this guess and check method. Sometimes it's called reverse foiling because it's undo undoing a foiling problem. Okay, so we have this going here. Okay, so we multiply to make negative 5. All right, I don't know how many of you guys saw this in the past. Add to make 4. Okay, and so you just brainstorm numbers. So negative 5 and 1. No, those add to make negative 4. Ooh, positive 5 and negative 1. That works. They multiply to make negative 5 and they add to make 4. That's supposed to be a plus symbol and it's horrible. All right, 5 plus negative 1 gives us the 4. 5 times negative 1 gives us, gives us negative 5. We are good to go. So I go plus 5 minus 1. All right, and really you might be able to just, you know, once you know what you're doing with these, you really can just look at this and go, okay, I know what the answer is. But, but here's how you actually show the work. You go, what you then do, once it's factored, and so to factor something means you're breaking it down into smaller parts that are being multiplied, right? So if you factor 20, it's 5 times 4. It's a, it's, a, it's a partially factored 20, right? So I've broken it up into smaller parts. Once you have that factored form, you take each factor and set them equal to 0, okay? So we get x equals negative 5 and x equals 1 because I subtract 5 from both sides, add one on both sides and the other one, boom, there's our two answers. Okay, we can see them right here, negative 5 and 1, if we solve by graphing like I basically did here, or we can see them here. They're, it's factored for this factored form, we uh, can just see them right there, basically. Uh, let me move this over. I feel like it's a little in the way. Let's do another one. So right here, x squared equals 4. Now here's the thing, and this is what a lot of students do wrong once they kind of get the hang of this. I don't want to say a lot of students, but it is a common error. It's something I see. I, I have to get 0 on one side. Okay. The, all the techniques, really, that we're going to learn in this section, or this chapter, you want all this stuff equals 0. A quadratic equals 0, not a quadratic equals 4. All right, a quadratic equals zero. So you have to have the first move is always to get everything on one side of the equation. So add and subtract four from both sides. Um, let me change colors. X squared minus four is zero. Okay, um, that's a horrible x. I'll fix it. But that's what you do. Okay, that's the first move. Okay. And then you try to, two things. This is what's called a difference of squares, which you may or may not remember. So actually, if you remember that, you can go straight to the factored form if you want. Okay, I'll start writing the factored form. Okay, by the way, you should verify that, you know, in these, you know, I would recommend verifying that these actually work correctly. I think it makes it kind of stick in your head a little bit better if you verify for it yourself that I'm, you know, not pulling a fast one. Okay, uh, so add to make negative 4, excuse me, multiply to make negative 4, well wait a second, what's B? Okay, so what you do is you look for what multiplies to make the last one and adds to make the middle one. In this case, the middle one is 0, so you want to find things that multiply to make negative 4, add to make 0, and that's 2 and negative 2, okay? On the next page, I'll do another like organizational technique. I, a lot of students maybe have seen this X before, like the trial and error guess and check method. That's a way of kind of organizing. But this is X plus 2, X minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so that means X, X equals negative 2. Well, hold on, let me actually show it. And x 
So you get x equals negative 2, x equals 2. Okay? So you think about it, well, yeah. If you want to solve x squared equals 4, remember what the answers are. It's positive and negative 2. It's plus or minus 2. Plus or minus the square root of 4. All right? That's called the square root method. There's another way of solving this that actually is probably a lot easier, but I wanted to show you this to show you that you actually get the same method, the same answer with this different method. All right? So specifically for this problem, it's a lot easier that, to just go basically straight to the answer if you know what you're doing. But solving by factoring works here too. All right? So, oops. All right, so this one. So we get x squared minus x equals 6. And we do this. Okay, and then another way that I've uh, organized my work before is I make it like a table. Multiply to make something and then add to make something else. So multiply to make negative 6. Well, let's see. So multiply to make uh, negative 6, add to make negative 1. So I could just try negative 6 and 1. All right, no, but that doesn't work. That adds to make negative 5. That doesn't work. So I try something else. So this is guess and check. You guess numbers to multiply to make the last and see if they add to make the middle. So I'm going to go 2 and I'll say, I'll say negative 2 and 3. And that adds to make 1. And I do, oh, wait a second, 2 and negative 3. That adds to make negative 1. And that's the boom. That's what we need. So this is x plus 2, x minus 3. All right. x minus 3. And so that's equal to 0. And then that means that the solutions are x equals negative 2 because you can set x plus 2 equal to 0 and x equals 3 because you said x minus 3 equal to 0 you said both factors equal to 0 separately and then you get the two answers okay now last but not least <clears throat> I'll probably do ones that are kind of like this in a class but how do you fact solve this one by factoring well uh, there's a guess and check type of a method. Sometimes it's called AC method. That's complicated enough. I'll probably just do it in class. All right, I don't want to do it in the video. I want you guys to be able to ask. Uh, and that's what you do when you have a number other than one. It's called the AC method sometimes. And if you have a number other than one, it's, it's a little harder to factor it. However, what we got going on here is that there's a common factor. I can factor out the greatest common factor of three if I wanted to, which I do, and we get this, okay? And if I did that, I can just divide both sides by 3. So I divide both sides by 3, and it's just x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0, okay? And so it's much easier. AC method is a little challenging, a little longer. And once you get the hang of it, just like anything else, it's not that bad. But definitely it's more challenging the guess and check method. Okay, so if A is something other than 1, okay, notice in all the problems we've done so far, A was 1, uh, then it's more challenging. Except this one, there's, you know, okay, there's like an easy trick to fix it. If you factor out the GCF, divide both sides by it, you get a, fat, a much more easy, you know, it's easier to factor. So X... So I'm not going to show the work, partially just because um, we're out of space here. But then also, you know, this is the third or fourth example. Let's all talk through it. So multiply to make positive 4, add to make negative 4. So two things that multiply to make 4 are 2 and 2. But if they add to make negative 4, they better be both negative. So this is a little weird. Okay, we've seen in situations like this before, though. It's the same factor twice. Okay, same factor twice means that actually you only have one answer. You get set x minus 2 equal to 0. And you get x equals 0. Or excuse me, 2. Boom. Sorry. Had some technical difficulties. Had to pause it. But anyway, there you go. One answer, and we're out of time.